Hey friends, and welcome to the bonus YouTube content for the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivy podcast. I'm Jamie, and I host this podcast every week, and today I sat down and chatted with Sam Alberry. In fact, if you want to listen to the whole episode, it is Happy Hour episode number 386. You can find this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, but today... Here's an interview question that you only get here on YouTube for the bonus content. Uh, Sam and I were talking about his book, Seven Myths of Singleness. It actually came out, I believe, 2019. He has a book also that came out in 2020 called does, Why Does God Care Who I Sleep With? Or Does God Care Who I Sleep With? I read it last year. Highly recommend it. And then he actually has a book coming out in the summer of 2021 that says what God has to say about our bodies and... How the gospel is good news for our physical selves. We talk a little bit about that in the interview as well. But our interview was really talking about seven myths of singleness. But I want to tell you this. If you go listen to the interview, it is for married people and single people. This is not a single people podcast. It is so good. And Sam has such good news about God's gift of singleness, God's gift of marriage, both of them together. But this extra content that I have for you now is I asked Sam, one of the one of the myths that he talks about is the myth that singleness means no intimacy. So we chat about that on the podcast. You should listen to it. But then I ask him, what does it mean for sexual intimacy? And does a person who has a Christian worldview of singleness now are they destined to a life of no sex? So here's what he had to say about that. <music> we talk about sex all right is there this myth that uh, that that sex is this gr this great amazing thing that you have to miss out on if you are single and how do you combat that when you talk to people that is exactly it um and for a lot of people i remember doing a, a presentation on the christian view of sexuality at this big christian conference in the uk and barely had had i reconnected with my seat having given the talk when this guy came right up to me he'd brought a bunch of of teenagers with him and you know the, the guy hosting the meeting was still thanking me and we hadn't finished yet and the guy just came up and immediately got right in my face and said are you telling me that i have to say to some of these kids that they might never have sex you know if they're same sex attracted or for other reasons don't marry are you seriously saying that and he was so angry. Um, but behind the question was a was a worldview that he didn't get from the Bible. And a worldview which, if he took it to its logical extension, would, would end up denying the full humanity of Jesus. Yeah. So there is this idea. We've we in a culture that has in many ways formally denied the existence of the transcendent. And yet we're wired for something transcendent. Where do we go to to find what we're looking for when we've already said to ourselves, there's no God and there's only what we can see and touch and taste? Well, we try and find it in food and we try and find it in sex. Mm. Um, and we, we've elevated sex into this sort of, this is how you fulfill who you are. And we've turned, you know, the whole thing's become about self-expression and identity and all that kind of thing for that very reason. We're, we've we freighted sex with all of this significance, while at the same time, then with, with the other side of our mouths turning around and saying, well, it's just a physical act. Why are you Christians trying to police it? Mm. So we're so confused on these things. But again, we've we've got to come back to this man who who keeps calling himself the bridegroom, what that means and what that then says and how that frames our own understanding of, of marriage and sexual intimacy in, in this life. And the, the fact is, whatever, whatever good and bliss is to be experienced by God's design with, with sex when it's properly enjoyed is, is but a foretaste of the ultimate bliss that we will find when we see our bridegroom face to face. Mm. Um, so there's a, there's a temporal pleasure that I may miss out on in this life. But if I have the very thing that it's pointing to in its fullness in the age to come, I can live with that. 
And moreover, if, if I'm thinking, oh, sex is the thing that's really going to make me happy. If I go looking for sex with that in mind, it will only disappoint me because it can't deliver that. And we talked about the, the the sort of distinction between sex and intimacy, that the two are not always the same. I've, I've seen people looking for transcendent intimacy through sexual encounters, and it makes them, A, perpetually disappointed, and B, very, very easy to exploit. 100%. You say here in the chapter of Singleness is Too Hard, you said, we also need to remember that Jesus made himself a eunuch for the sake of the kingdom. Jesus willingly became fully human for us. He willingly became a male. He was a sexual human being as we all are, but he lived a celibate lifestyle. He never married. He never even entered a romantic relationship. He never had sex. Jesus was not calling others to a standard he was not willing to embrace himself. He wasn't calling singles to sexual abstinence while knowing nothing of it himself. He lived this very teaching. Maybe that should be enough, maybe? You would think, wouldn't you? <laughs> I remember, I can't remember if this is in the book or not, but I remember talking to a, a pastor who had a very different view of sexual ethics to me, um, and I would say to God as well. Um, and he said to me once, he said, we were talking about, Christians who were same-sex attracted and you know who the, the calling of celibacy on on those who were not able to marry and he said you are dooming people to a life without love mm. and I'm not normally this direct and confrontational but I said to him if the only way of experiencing love in your church is by being married your church really sucks I like it Sam because it does yeah. If that's really what he's saying, then that's a that's a terrible church a to terrible be at. Church. It's a if if church. this is the thing I love, if if God is love, then the more we walk with him, we're not going to end up with less love in our life. If we're walking in his ways, we're walking in the ways of love itself. Mm. Um and we're actually changing lesser love for better love. We're not changing more love for no love um there's a there's time say it again Sam. that was so good um when you remember um, what you said no <laughs> <We're just> like, <laughs> lesser love for our... for better love so let me give you an example there's there okay. are two ladies at, at my church here in nashville who and they've this is this is rebecca mclaughlin just wrote about them in her new book the secular creed so i'm, I'm not spilling any I can't wait private to read beans it, by the way. oh it's epic She's coming um, on the show soon too, and I am such a big fan of her. So carry on. Excellent. Ask just ask her about the, her experience of of going into the wrong restroom at TGC. Um, Perfect. I love it. I love a good story. <laughs> um, there's two ladies at our church who had been for probably 10, 15 years a lesbian couple, and they had a daughter and had adopted a second daughter. The Lord did a work in both their hearts and they, they having kind of completely turned their back on church and the Lord had realized they needed to come back. And they phoned up a pastor who happened to be the son-in-law of one of them and said, we, we think we need to come to church and we want to move to Nashville and join Emmanuel Church. What do we do? He said, come and move in with us as a family and we'll just figure it out. I love that response. Mm. Um, so they, they did, their family went from four to nine. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they are wonderfully growing in Christ. And I, I was chatting to them a few months ago and said, how, you know, how are you doing now that, you know, you used to be a couple, you're not a couple now. How are you finding that? And they said, we feel far closer as sisters in Christ than we ever felt as lovers. Mm. And that's what made me realize, okay, on a very worldly metric that's based where we've so conflated love and intimacy with sex, they've gone from more love to less love. From the metric of the gospel, they've gone from a lesser form of love to a greater form of love because it's the form of love God has designed them for. Uh, we're not going to, if God is love, then we're never going to find 
better and more love in disobeying his ways. And we're never going to end up walking in a less loving way with others if we obey him. Um, he, he just knows more about love than we do. Yeah. So we need, to, we need to let him show us how to love people in the right way. And we will not end up with a deficit of love as a result yeah. of that. You guys... Sam Alberry, bring in the heat, bring in the truth, bring in the good news, actually. And so if you want more of what we talked about here, go find my podcast, The Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey. Look for episode number 386. It came out April 30th, 2021, where Sam and I spend a whole hour talking about seven myths of singleness from his book. There it is. You can get it wherever you find books. Um, and in fact, you know what? I would love to give away one of these books. So right here in YouTube, leave us a comment and we're going to pick someone to give away a book to. Uh, you guys, thanks for watching the bonus content. We do this. We try to do this every week and I love it so much. And if you love Sam, go listen to his um, other interviews he's done on other podcasts. Find his books. He's just a great guy. And I really... I really learn a lot from him and respect him and the work that he's doing. So thanks for watching the bonus content. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss another episode here. And if you want to hear the whole episode, don't forget, go find it. The Happy Art Jamie Ivy, wherever you listen to podcasts. Episode number 386 with Sam Alberry. Peace out, guys.